That is why, again, now and every day, we are saying it is our responsibility as the Department of Communication to make sure that we establish community radio stations where people are. Currently, we have made sure that each and every district community at least does have one community radio station. Why do we do that? We do that because we want citizens to have access to information. Not just them to have access to information, but also for them to be able to talk to each other, whether as communities or as customers or as citizens, voters of the That's the Having gone through the National Development Plan, you have seen the things that I said that are crucial for you and me, especially when you graduate here, leaving this campus to say, indeed, I'm ready to make my own contribution to the economic growth of my country, the NDP, identifies challenges that we're facing with the country. Amongst those is the issue of job creation, is the issue of poverty. But crucial to that is the skilling of the nation towards the market requirement. We might pay as government to NSFAS for number of students, but if they are not studying what the market requires with whatever experience and employment of young graduates because of what they study in school. That is why it is important that wherever we are, where the church is saying, we write in the corner. You make sure that the little information that you have, you share it with those that are around you. Because if we don't encourage our young brothers and sisters who are still at the lower level, whether it's the junior level, that it is important that we take lessons right. So that we are able, when we go to tertiary institutions, to take a career path that will not lead to you having your degree by sitting at home. Because the market does not require it. And when the market does not require your skill or your qualification, what it simply means is that it is going to affect the economic growth of the country and will forever experience protests like we are experiencing today. But besides that, it means we are demoralizing those ones that still want to go to tertiary. Because they're like, my sister has gone to school, she has two degrees, she has whatever. Well, there are a few of us who you know, always think that if you have a genetic group, wow, I'm a child, then I, I, I need it all, I'm, I'm learning it. But reality is that we have seen in the past 19 years, that as much as we have the experience that we have gathered, but it is important that we always update our skills. Because the BSc that you did in 1995 or in 2005 is not relevant now. <laughs> that is why in the ICT world, we tell you all the time you are being told. Because you can lose your job at any time. Because technology can replace you. <coughs> Two years back, I was invited in Europe. They had their European Youth Awards in ICT. Different countries represented by young people coming up with different projects that seek to influence what things or programs must be led or embarked on by the European Union. Among those projects, there was one that touched me whereby they came up with this device. When we call it at home, it's an armband. Those things are the people patterns as well. It's the armband, the black. Okay. It's like an armband. The day the baby daddy is for a pregnant woman. The baby daddy wears this thing when he goes to work or wherever he goes to. And the mother packs something, just put some of that. It's like a bottle to the stomach. So when the baby kicks, I think it goes orange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thereby creating communication between the mother and the child. That's the reality of the world. 
we are going to in 10 years' time. Not the a digital world. That's where we must all ready ourselves in Because if we are forgotten about that, as I said, it will be irrelevant. That is why I tell people, make sure that you utilize ICT as your enabling tools in your area of work, wherever you are. Right now, I put everything on my phone. It reminds me, it does everything. I tell Siri, Siri, I want to talk to Siri. Siri dials Siri, and then I talk to Siri. Those are the things that the technology is doing, which means tomorrow, like we have started with the program of math and science in high schools, the telematic centers that we're deploying. You don't have to come to class. If, as we understand as a country, we are facing challenges of enough teachers in terms of science and math. With the Stellenbosch University, we have linked so many students to the deployment of the telematic center, whereby they have their, le their lessons online, but visually so looking and being able to interact with the lecturer in Stellenbosch. That tells you that one day we'll wake up and take it. We don't need to just do it in our class. That is why we always add everybody because we know that you are active in this social network. But one thing that we don't do is to use them for development. Mm. We don't do that. The only thing is, that, okay, let me take my baby to this. Let me put the nice <laughs> little <guitar. laughs> and all those. One thing that we can do to make sure that those social networks that are there, they are still American children, by the way, we still need South Africans to come up with applications that would respond and challenge those smart to mm -hmm. And we're not going to get them from anywhere except here at home. So we encourage you as you go through your cell phones, because you do have these devices with you. We're not talking about something that is not there. I'm sure most of you or all of you have smartphones. How many of you are on music? <laughs> well, let me tell you what, I am on Mixit. There's lots of developmental programs on Mixit. Lots of developmental programs, including educational programs. Right now we're running a competition on Ibarilang, my story, whereby we want young people to tell us where do they see themselves in 15 years' time. Thereby trying to influence the policy that we must make today yeah. as government. It is important that at all times we seek knowledge. We are committed as government in ensuring that we build an information society. Why do we think it's important that we build an information society? It's because we believe that without information, our people will not be able to to play the effective role that we want them to play in advising government in terms of what must be done, in terms of the policies that we are developing, including the innovation that we talked to. That is why we launched the Skills Institute as a Department of Communications. On your cell phone, you can access internet because I know your Facebook and everywhere. You just go to Department of Communications, you click on NEMISA or the Skills Institute, it offers you online courses but only on the e-skills. You know what's the e-skills? <laughs> there is an I'm saying, let's ready ourselves for the digital world. It's because we need the e-skills. Everybody wants to pay in the cyberspace through your internet and all those things. Mm. Right now we're talking with Shelly, they think, wow, there's that time that is coming. We're going to be sworn in as new members of Thailand. We know what they're going to be. <laughs> like, okay, how will you make sure that what the is suit and all that? And I'm showing it. Yeah, let you learn how to just go on the outside, we choose whatever we want. That's what we refer to as e commerce. Process funding thing. Ship or courier our stuff. We get our clothes over there and they like us. It's of interest. Overseas, they take the stuff in my face. Hey, we don't have money for that. But we utilize what is the power. That's why it's important that the little things that we're doing here, so including the SLC programs, must be available where people are. It's very important. Because we're just telling something that information must go on papers. No. You are too young for that. I'm looking at this 
I already said to you, I don't take any paper. You give me a business card, I don't take those things, those cards. I take a picture of it because I'm clear about one thing. I'm ready myself for the future. So that when I go to court, if I am a lawyer, I know how to deal with the judge, utilizing the technology, at the same time advancing with what is there to address the case that I will present when I'm there. Now again, what is the role of PR in shaping the image of the country? Why do you complain every day that South African or South African ratings are dropping? We've heard that, have you? Is it true? Yes. Is it true? Yes. Well, you're not sure. Let me tell you. The reason why most of you will sit at home at high school and decide that I'm going to receive, uh, I'm going to study at CPUT is because of the PR that has been done for CPUT. The reason that any other child that is out there in high school says, my first preference is best, or in Cape Town is UCT, it's because of the PR that has been done for UCT. What is the PR that it's how you present yourself. It doesn't mean that there are no negatives, but you tend to capitalize on the goods, on the strengths of whatever that you want to make sure that you market. How do you then do that if you don't understand your product? Which is a dilemma that you are facing yourself. Do not on the same understanding about our country. Others do agree that yes, we have achieved a lot. Others say no, there isn't much that we have achieved. Actually, nothing happened. We think 1992 was better than where we are today. This affects, therefore, even those that want to come and invest in our country, thereby helping in reducing high unemployment, but also ensuring that. They give us skills through the investments that they will be making in our country, especially on industrial education. That's the role of PR. Of PR. The fact that here yeah, you run running certain programs and others in Stephen Bush, they don't know. It tells what kind of a PR strategist or manager will be on time. Mrs. Muzabe will tell you that everything starts with you. How you look? Very mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. How you look is very important. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me. Followed by what you know. That's why at all times we say study, study, study. It doesn't matter how many qualifications you have. But like I said, that information that, uh, that you have is literary information. Somebody somewhere would have discovered something new that is going to replace what you do. So it's always important to make sure that we upgrade our skills so that we are relevant at all times. And once we do that, we're able to stand boldly and say, hey, you know what? I don't care what you think about me because you know your story. The ANC and my government brings about the good story that we have in the past few years. But have we managed to tell that good story? Or are we only thinking about it right now in 1994? Why must we wait until 20 years to tell our story? Why can't we brag about everything that God has blessed us with when my boss was in the Just give me that one. <laughs> Why can't we tell everything that we experienced every day so that people don't hear it from the second or the third person? The reason today we're not sure of what is happening in our country, in our country or where is our country is because we don't like to communicate. And believe you me, even if you go to the Bible, the old man will tell you, even for God to listen to your request.
you must be able to make contact every day with these. That is very important. We tend to think at times that we will sit here and the RDP, well now it's not the RDP, it's the NDP, that's what, the NDP shot will come and flesh us in and deliver us somewhere. No, it's not going to happen. Even that NDP is a living document that seeks to tell our story every day of the changes that we must bring. But how do we then make sure that we bring those changes and share with the world so that we are able to learn from the best? One thing that we cannot undermine as South Africans is the fact that we have potential to be the best in the world. That we do, we know. Because we have the same life. That doesn't mean anything. Which means anything is possible to us. But we don't want to tap into that to ensure that we make our own mark. Not just for the sake of our individuality, but for the sake of the entire society in South Africa. We can only do that when we have information at the tips of our heads. That is why we talk about information society. That I will tell you that it's important that for us to build that information society, we do it through the deep, the digital economy the usage or the utilization of the devices that you have there. You don't need to go anywhere to get this information. It's right there. Let me now come towards, I come from the Department of Communications again. I just want to encourage most of you. I know most of you have those email addresses. I know most of you have email addresses. And those email addresses have the American domain at .com. Because we don't understand the economic value of that. We're going to sit and complain. Hey, 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 I hear our roads are hey, 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 hey. And then we are not employed. Government is not creating job opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when we have mics that are made in Germany. <laughs> made in China. Because we don't want. To, to have, yes, we must manufacture my, my fear from home. It's not, it's not impossible. But we just need you to challenge your, uh, to, to challenge your energy and the knowledge that you have to the right direction so that you forever relevant. It's those little things that you don't pay attention, that you think they don't matter. Our countries have made great strides in the economic growth because of these things. That we pay attention. I was look, reading in the papers, uh, reading the papers show, after the release of the Ghana report. Public enterprise has awarded a 50 billion tender to this Chinese company. You know, I checked, my husband even posted it on Facebook, and nobody paid attention. Why aren't we concerned about the things that matter most? If you have awarded a 50 billion, one we understand is because of the experience they have, because we're talking of rape and all that, but then what is it that is in for us as a country? Why can't we make noise about those? We just want to make noise on the small tenders that like are 50 million as the young papa. Why is real money is leaving our country actually? When are we going to wake up? Those that came before us have played their part. It is up to now, as this generation, it is up to us as this generation, to make sure that we deliver economic freedom, not just to ourselves, but even to those that will come after us. Well, unlike my then constituents in the UK, that we want economic freedom in our lifetime, I tell them I want it now. I can't wait. Because if you are saying in my lifetime I can get it at 75 years. No. I don't want to be rich at everything when I'm 75. I want to enjoy it right now. And the first step for you to achieve that is to make sure that you employ it. We can nationalize all the banks, all the mines, this rain that I'm talking about. But believe you me, we will go back. 
and need project managers from those countries. They will come and take this money because you don't know anything. You know when there's a tender for a road construction and then they site inspection. They say the council must go there. By that time the councillor is just a teacher or oh, a next if she's lucky or he is lucky. She's going to monitor these engineers doing whatever they what is it that you're monitoring if you don't know how a road is constructed? <laughs> The basic thing. Parliament passes legislation every day. You are seated here in tertiary institutions. None of you participate in those processes. But those legislations are the ones that are going to affect you, are the ones that determine your future when you leave this institution. Actually, they start in with it when you're still here. But it's worse when you leave this institution. It is now high time that we will claim our space. And I'm saying, yeah, it wasn't a letter. <laughs> it is high time that we become part of the solution. We cannot forever and complain. As I have said earlier on, others have played their part. It is up to us. As I said, again, the economic growth of our country depends on us. Those first year students that come to these institutions must be taken through career guidance by yourselves if you have failed to go and tell them at high school level. That's your responsibility as leadership in a tertiary institution. Your responsibility is not only to for accommodation and all those more other things of food in the <laughs> But how do we make sure that we think the academia in the correct path? So that tomorrow, South Africa is counted amongst the big countries. Not big because of the size, but in terms of the economic growth and what we can do. Let us be in 10 years time, make sure that we even above China that has overtaken everybody in this world. They do not go to a country. They sat down, they strategized. They even deployed their young children to other countries to learn certain skills. Let us not get excited by the fact that we get NSFAS to study in the <coughs> Let's make it a point that it's fine that government has given us an opportunity to get a junior degree, but hey, we will have scholarships that will take us out to learn the things that South Africa cannot produce. We come back and be able to say we have manufactured our own aeroplane. You know we have FAA agent. But we rely on other countries to bring the big planes and SAA, by the way, the government entity. But when are you going to realize that? That we need you to come up with pain. We need you to go to the engineering side and all that. Having said that, allow me to tell you that the ANC government, President Zuma, Minister Kare, including myself, we love you. So much. And we know that each of this country is in safe hands with you, but only when you listen. Thank you for coming.